So this is the first time we've been in the bees for about nine days. And you can see how much water we've had. We've had rain for five days in a row, which is a little unusual for this part of Indiana. And you can see the water standing there. And this is not a place where water usually stands, but we have just had two and a half inches of rain in the last five days and everything is wet and the bees are wanting to get out. And this is a perfect example of why you need to keep food on your bees in the spring in places where the weather is just crazy because if you don't have food on them, then they're gonna go that many days without building up. Okay, so here we are on day 10 of the four-way mating nucleus. And this is, uh, if you remember, on day four, we went to make sure that the queens were released. And if they weren't released, we released them. And uh, the only thing that I've done to this uh, unit is uh, fill these feeders back up. And that's the only thing that I've done. since we uh, released the queen. And you can see that they have drained those down. I should have filled them up again, but I did not because it's been raining for five days straight and I literally could not even get out here to do it. So we're just gonna have to be okay with that. Sometimes, you know, they got, they had two quarts of syrup. So that's amazing. It's still a lot. So we're going to go back to this one first. I'm going to pry the uh, outside frame out because the queen is most likely in the center there. Not always, but pry this one out and give it a look. Just a few bees there. Not very many at all. They're uh, checking out the comb, not doing a lot to it. On this one, they have completely filled that with nectar. You can see that. Probably the sugar syrup, because this is the first day that they've been out today. So I, I know that there are a lot of dandelions blooming now, but I'm sure that it wasn't uh, they haven't been out that long. It's only been a couple hours, so that's a lot of food. So there's our queen. You can see her. She's pretty healthy. She's very big. She swelled up. And she is actively laying. You can see there, there's eggs in there. And she's laying in a circle about the size of a softball. And that's kind of how they start in these little nukes. You can see there's the queen on the bottom. But they start in a circle and they have food and pollen around it. And that's kind of how they do it. So we'll turn over to the other side. This side has been laid totally with eggs in the center again. And you can see where they put the food. So, like I said, I wasn't too worried about filling up that feeder again because they already had two quarts. So they used it. These frames are heavy. And they used it. And so here they are. They're building up this comb right now where it was uh, taken down. I think we ruined some. I don't know if it was this side here where we had the queen cage or this side, but they have totally worked that comb and there was some mice damage on that one. And here's one that has still some mold and some other things. They haven't gotten to that one yet because there's not a lot of bees in here. So they're, they're working on the ones that they, that they can handle. So that looks fantastic. About the only thing that I would do at this point is I treat this uh, package for mites with oxalic acid because I don't want to bring mites into my apiary. 
And so we will show that process in the next couple days. I want to do that before they cap any brood so that it gets all the phoretic mites, which are the mites that are on the back of the bees. If mites go inside of a capped brood cell, um, oxalic acid does not kill them. So we want to we want to hit them before that happens. And so now I'm looking down at these from the top, and what I see is this one has a lot more bees. Bees, 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 bees. This one just has bees, bees, bees. So it's three seams of bees, four or five in this one. So, you know, that's what I was saying before about they equalize themselves. This queen must have had a better smell. They liked her better, whatever reason. And so as um, the days and weeks go on, we can equalize that. This one will make brood faster and we can take one of these frames out and put it somewhere else um, before we actually take these queens out and make the nukes with them. Um, so we can do all of that. Right now we're just checking on the progress. So again, I'm going to take this first frame out. Actually, it would have been this frame, but they all have a lot of bees on them in this hive. And see, there you go. There's the queen. That's why you have to be very careful in these little five frame nukes, because you don't have as much space as you do in a 10 frame hive. And you never really know. She's right there. You never really know where she's at. So being careful is always better. This is a full frame of syrup. So again, they had plenty of food. The outside is not full. And what this tells me is that they have filled this puppy with syrup and she has probably laid all the other cells. Or she's just on that side. But I would say that she's probably laid all the other cells already. So here we go. We're looking down into this comb. I'm gonna blow the bees off. And sure enough, all these cells are full of either a fresh egg or an egg with quite a bit of royal jelly in it. And we'll try to zoom in on that. And this side is the same thing. There's several day old larvae and eggs and a variety of uh, things going on. So this just proves the point that that queen was ready. She had a smell and more bees went to her. And so she got a head start and there's more brood and stuff in this one. Not brood, but more eggs and larva on their way to being brood than there is in this other one. Now this frame has been laid with almost all eggs. So they like the dark comb. And so they lay that up pretty fast. This one also has eggs in almost every cell, except the very bottom. You can see there's pollen and uh, syrup down there. And the rest of it has been laid up. So this one is gonna be full very quickly. And we will have to watch it a little closer to make sure that they don't start making swarm cells. Um, but they're working on this one, so they've got places to work. So they haven't laid anything in this one, and this is old comb. This is where some uh, dead bees were, and maybe some wax moth damage, and so they're fixing those, and they're going to work on that, and they'll be fixing that, and that'll take them some time. And here is the outside frame of where the cluster is and they're putting syrup in that one from the feeder so uh, they've taken all this has got some weight to it they've taken all that syrup that we fed them and made a made a food frame and then so i'm interested to see what this one is because usually they don't put they put the food on the outside so no eggs just uh more pollen and uh, nectar and they're working it they've cleaned it and then on the outside this is where we had a little bit of honey and they've taken most of that honey already i think there was a 
a little bit of honey that we actually gave these guys from a from a frame from last year so they're working on that and so that's what we got on this one this is a, a really happy one Ooh, gotta watch that they're close there they want to eat that but just put them down I think I scraped the honey off so they're doing pretty good I'm pretty happy with that no worries give them a little puff so I can put it back and we're going to look in the other side real quick I'm just going to leave these jars up because they're empty anyway same with this one is almost empty they still have a little bit but there's a little nipple inside that jar that that prevents them from getting all of it it will only go down so low so i'm sure that they have sucked these dry as much as they possibly can so in this one i'm looking down and i'm seeing a lot of bees in here and almost no bees in this one so that's telling me that maybe that queen in there died uh, or they just let it be sometimes they just abandon it um, and if you remember one of these had a queen that they hadn't released yet and that sometimes in this when they're this early they don't get mated properly and they don't have that smell and we've had such bad weather that she probably couldn't go out and get mated so we're just gonna see there's no bees on that frame no bees on this frame actually it looks like the syrup was leaking because nobody was in here eating it so what probably happened is they probably just got robbed out nothing going on a few bees in here there's like two frames of bees in here at most Pull this one up gently to see if we can find a queen. They got plenty of food because they had syrup. They're bringing in pollen. And this is the final frame. And we do have a queen. There she is. So, and she's laid eggs. She's right there. You can see her. She's right up here. She's moving very vigorously. That's really nice. She's, she looks healthy. She's fattened up. So basically what happened is they just lost a lot of their bees. And they uh, have laid this up again. See how it's like a softball size? And then they put the pollen, the nectar, and then nectar on top. And that's kind of how these work. I actually had last year, I wish they would have filmed it, um, I actually had a perfect circle of pollen target and it was different colors it looked like a target it was three rings of pollen in a perfect circle it was amazing and i didn't have my camera with me and by the time i got back to that uh, four-way nuke they had uh, eaten all the pollen and put brood in it but so what has happened is they have moved all the way up to this side they're probably sharing the heat with that one because it's been fairly cold and so i'm just going to leave them for now very small very small size and so what's going to happen is that one of these is going to have to give up a frame of bees and it's probably going to be that one you saw how big that one is how many bees are there and once they get one of those frames fully fully laid with brood i'll take it out and put it right in the center of these i'll move these into the center and i'll do that so that's what you do you can wait to balance these you don't have to do it right away you don't have to get nervous as long as you have a queen she's laying and uh, they've got food things are great they don't all have to have exactly the same amount of bees and all that and they're not going to because they they're they're each individual hives and they work at their own pace and so I just want to get her up to a little bit more of a level. And, you know, some would probably say, well, maybe that queen 
Here's a place where the mice were chewing on this one last year. Some would say, well, maybe that queen's no good because like I was saying, you know, every, all the bees went somewhere else, but not necessarily. It's possible that they just couldn't get her out because remember that candy was hard and they gave up and the bees went somewhere else because they were smelling another queen that was maybe already out and laying. So until you get these things going, they're cleaning this comb a little bit and here they have uh, started to draw the comb where we had the queen cage and they're filling that with syrup. Um, maybe that queen will get, you could saw how vigorously she was moving. So she wasn't lethargic, doesn't look unhealthy. She laid a full, both sides of a frame and that's all the bees they have to keep warm. So we have to kind of wait. So here's a queen right in the center there. Nice golden Italian queen. She's actively looking for a place to lay. She's on the syrup frame. So there isn't a whole lot of place for her to lay. And here they made a little burk home. I try to get off as much of that off as I can so that my frames aren't all sticking together. But as the season goes on, these things get harder and harder to, to get into. This one is light, so I have a feeling this is all eggs and larvae. Sure enough, this one is solid all the way down to right where that syrup starts is uh, eggs and larvae. And on this side, same thing, a full frame of uh, eggs and larvae. So basically, they're all between one and two frames of eggs and larvae. This one has another, this is a full frame right here. It's got a little more weight to it. They've got the, the honey ring on the top, which is not honey, it's syrup, but we call it the honey ring because that's what they do. And you can see this one, they've filled more of it in and there's eggs right in there. And as you can see, as they use those resources up, they fill it with, the queen will fill it with eggs. And so we don't really need to feed them anymore until they eat some of that food down because otherwise they'll be honey bound and she won't be able to lay. So we're going to hold off on refilling those feeders unless we have a situation where they need to build comb and these, uh, I believe only this one has to build some comb. So we're just going to kind of leave it for now. And uh, for another day or two. And that's kind of the 10 day inspection. Again, um, the only thing I will do is uh, I will treat these hives and uh, I will probably mark the queens so that when, uh, when I go to move them to the nucleus colonies, I'll know what year they're from. And uh, if one of them would swarm, then I would know that my, uh, my four-way nuke here swarmed. And uh, if I had put a specific kind of queen in here from one of my graphs and I had marked her, she's gone, I would know this was not one of my queens, just for information purposes. So that's the 10-day uh, inspection. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, be extraordinary. Well, if you'd like to become a better beekeeper, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.